Hi guys, it's Sandra here from Create in Spain. Would you like to be able to stamp and foil your images? And I'm not talking with embossing powders. I am talking about foiling just by using glue, the foil, and running it through a laminator. Just a normal, standard laminator, nothing special. This is the laminator that I have. This one came from Aldi earlier this year. They sell them for about 19 euros, I think it was. Um, so yeah, cheap, cheerful, no extra settings on it. It just does its stuff. Now with all of this, you need to let your laminator heat up for a good 10, 15 minutes probably before you start actually trying to get the foil to stick on. So if you're gonna do this, get your laminator ready to go first. Now I don't know about you, but as a crafter, I have so many different glues, texture pastes, paints, inks, blah, blah, blah. I really don't want to have to buy any more if I can possibly help it. But I did want to do some foiling. And I got myself a foil kit about a year ago. In fact, I did a review on it. And for working with sticky tape, you know, double side tape, it's brilliant. But for anything else, I was having terrible difficulties trying to do anything. I can't use my laser printer for doing this because my laser printer doesn't seem to want to print nice, crisp images on anything other than tracing paper, vegetable paper, or normal printer paper. It just won't print nicely on card. And apart from anything else, most of the time I don't actually want to print off a whole page or something. I just want to add a little bit of glitz. So being able to stamp an image and then shove it through a laminator is a good idea. So I decided yesterday to have a concerted effort to sort out what I've got that might work. So I did a whole load of stamping with various different glues and I then treated them the same way. I applied the glues by using bits of this sponge and just dabbing it onto the stamp. I used the same stamp. I used the same paper. Okay, there's one piece which has got a different color, but it is the same brand of paper and the same type of paper. And I came across a very interesting result. Now let me show you which ones I tried. This one came from either Aldi or Lidl, I can't remember which, and it's got some gold on there, and I used the same foil by the way, the same type of foil. This has got some gold on there, but it is lacking in strength. You know, it's a little bit golden, but not as you'd want it to be. It tends to push the glue to the outer edges and I've not got a completely golden image. You know, the edges are golden but the images are not fully stamped or at least they, they seem to be stamped okay but they're, they're not fully foiled. And I found that this was pretty much the case with everything that I tried. This one is a Liquitex gloss gel and again the same sort of thing. Elmer's glue all. Even less. Ackley varnish glue. No, still not working. Oddly enough, I tried some silicone glue and that was slightly better, but it squidges. So, still not a nice clean image. And I tried the super tight Pigmento Escolar Blue Gel, so blue school gel, and that didn't do anything at all. No great surprise, I didn't really expect it to, it's not the right sort of glue. However, I found one glue that did the job pretty much perfectly. I tried it on different materials. 
Now this is the same paper as the other one that I've showed you. I have it on acetate, I have it on vellum, I have it on the thick paper which is definitely absorbent and I have it on this um, shimmer cardstock and it stamped well on all of them and it's this 90 cents for 60 grams of wrinkle free glue no wrinkle paper glue that's what it's called so I got this in my local Chinese shop it's super tight as a brand which is available in lots of places over here but I believe that you can actually get it in the States as well because they have an American website I'm sure they do it's a Glimco group company apparently hmm. well there we go um, so this is what I used and this is what gave me the clear stamped image it dries as glues generally do to non tacky finish but the actual glue itself is very sticky and gummy and yeah very very sticky I mean some glues don't feel very sticky when you feel them but this one does and that is obviously what you need but the fact of the matter is that it coats the stamp well and it coats it well enough so that you get the whole image but it doesn't run and all I did was stamp a bit of glue on here dab it over my stamp make sure it was well inked up as it were and then I stamped with it as I would normally I didn't even use a stamp position or anything and then I allowed it to dry totally so this wasn't done sort of like two minutes after it was stamped. I just went away, had lunch, came back, and by then it was dried out. So that's what to use if you want something cheap to stamp and foil your images. Now for the carrier, I found with this particular machine, I have some 250 GSM Aldi or little card. <laughs> I know it came from one, I don't know which one. And I just put my items in here with the foil on top and put it through once. That's it, just the once. But I did preheat my laminator. Now once I've done that, I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can. And my mind went to stencils. So you know what's coming, don't you? I decided to try out stenciling. Now this should have been a solid stencil, but it's not. And that was a texture paste from Little Number Three Clear Texture Paste. It doesn't plasticize, obviously, or it sinks too much in. I don't know what it was, but it just doesn't work. So if you got the Number Three Texture Paste from Little, don't bother. It's not going to work for that. It's fine for other things, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but it just won't do that. Um, this one here was my glue from here. Now, this definitely will pick up the foil, as you can see, but in such large quantities, it kind of goes misshapen. So it's not really suitable to that, and I really didn't think it would be. I didn't expect it to be successful at all. It was better than I thought it was going to be. If you wanted a non-determined pattern, you'd still be fine. You know, you could draw with it or whatever and leave it to dry and then you could do what you wanted to with it. In fact, I have half a mind to put this in an empty ballpoint and see if that'll work. Now this one is the Liquitex Texture Paste. And that one came out really nicely. Now, I know there are some gaps in here, but that is where I haven't covered it with foil properly or I haven't had enough of the texture paste on. But it obviously picks up the pattern when you stencil it. So that one will definitely do the job. And I have seen products specifically for applying foil and I don't know if they are any better than that. Perhaps they are. Perhaps if someone would actually send me some, I could find out. 
But considering this will do the job, unless someone can prove to me that the other one is going to do it better, I'm not going to buy something else to do it. And finally, best one of all, this one, which is absolutely beautiful. It has the raised element still, so it looks like it's embossed. And this one was the wood glue, but that is absolutely brilliant. Now, I do have another wood glue, which is this one, which is a cheap one, probably came from the Chinese shop, and it does say it's a rapid dry one. It's not as thick as the other one, and I don't know whether it will work. I have, however, done a, it's not dry yet, so I can't, can't try it yet. I have, however, done a stencil with it, and once that's dry, I'll try putting it through the laminator and see what happens. I have a design in here that I've stenciled, and I used the Liquitex gel. And I'm just going to put some gold foil over it. Now, I've left it to dry for about an hour and a half. I've had my laminator heating up for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to put this through and see what results we get. Oh yeah. That's looking pretty good. A little bit of extra on these bits here, but I'm guessing that's probably where the stencil wasn't quite a clean stencil. You can see where it is splodged, splodged there. Um, I think it's probably due to the fact that the Elmer's glue is thinner. So if I was going to use a glue, I would try and get my hands on this one because that gave absolutely brilliant results. That was faultless results. That really was good. But this one comes from either Aldi or Lidl and I don't know if you can get it elsewhere. I'll have a search online and see if I can find it. And if so, I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Let me go through some of the equipment which you'll find useful. I have off to one side a A4 sized tray with some warm water in it. Now this is invaluable for making sure that you can reuse your stencils if not like this they're actually reusable. These are paper ones, so I can get one use out of them only. But if you have plastic ones, you want to make sure you don't wreck them every time you use them, along with your palette knives and anything else you might use. Now, the other thing that I have, which I have just got for myself, I have one of these for the kitchen because I do my own bread making and pastry making and so on and so forth. And this is the type of thing that I use in the kitchen to divide up dough or to possibly scrape around a cake with icing and that sort of stuff. But it's really, really good for applying uh, various substances to your stencils if you are doing what is traditionally a European A6 size, which is 10.5 by 14.8. This one is wide enough to do the 14.8 or indeed the 10.5 in one sweep and you'll see what I mean in a moment. I'm going to take some ink so you can actually see what I'm doing and I'm going to put it onto my ceramic tile. Again this is a very useful thing to have in your craft room because you can mix paints, glues, or sorts of things on it, and it cleans up pretty easily. So I think I'm going to go for that as well. Find the one I'm looking for. Okay, go for this one, I think. Okay, so I have some colour, and I'm going to mix it up with some Liquitex Gloss Gel. But first of all, I'm going to get my 
stencil ready. I've got some acetate to stencil on to today. And I'm just going to put my stencil over the top of that and tape it down. Now I've not got much of a rim on this particular stencil, so there we go. And just making sure that the whole of the stencil is on the acetate. Now I haven't put any adhesive on the side of this, so it may well, or on the back of it I should say, because it may well leach underneath, but you'll get the idea for the technique. So I'm just going to put a smallish amount, I don't think I need that much, of this paste onto the tile. And first of all, I'm going to mix some into the pink and just do the old splodge. Mix some into the blue. Do some splodges mix them into the purple and do some splodges. Now I'm going to wipe my palette knife off quite nicely with a paper towel because I don't want to put any colour in here and because I've not got enough there I'm going to add some more of this along the top like so. That should be enough. And just go over the top of this. Making sure I've got everything covered. And it looks like I've got just about the right amount of paste here. Okay. So if I left it like that, it would be different levels in different places. So that's not usually the intention I have. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and just one scrape down like that. See if I've got any gaps. If I have, I can press down like so. And that's done. And I know now that I have the entire stencil done, or should have the entire stencil done to the same level. And if I've finished with that, I can wipe it off and I can put it in my warm water on my tray. So let's see how this has come out. Because this is actually stuck to the stencil, I might be able to pick it up. No, it's left. Here we go. And pull that off. And there's my stenciled image and I can let that dry and then it will be really really nice. Now I do have a little gap down in there obviously I missed putting enough of the gel down there but you can see how nicely the majority of it is nice and flat and that makes it a lot better if you're going to do any foiling that makes it a lot easier to foil but even if you're not it gives it a much smoother finish than having done it with a smaller tool and having scrape lines down the middle or down either side. It's just really irritating when that happens. So that's the benefit of having a scraping tool which is as wide as the project you are doing. Now I'm going to get some more of my texture paste. I'm going to use up the remains of the one that I had before. So smoosh that one on that stencil there, wipe my thing off and I want to put some more colour down so I'm going to get some more on my tile. So I have some powder pigment here and I'm just going to put that over the top of my gel. and just mix it in. Now you can use all sorts of things to colour these gels. You can use powder pigments, you can use inks, watercolours, liquid watercolour, all sorts of things. 
so just going to try and make sure that I've got everything covered here. I really quite like doing stenciling onto acetate. I just think it gives this lovely window effect. It's just really pretty. And you can get all sorts of uh, acrylic gels that will do the same thing. This one happens to be liquid text, but it doesn't have to be. Right. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife, and I'm just gonna go over this with a bit more of the clear to make sure that everything is filled in before I give it a scrape. I think everything is done there. Be careful when you use this sort of stuff not to get it around the rim because you'll have terrible trouble in trying to release the lid later if you do. So hold that down. probably do need to add a little more because I've got some holes coming in there. So I'll put some more at the top. Normally I use a lot of extra gel and then wipe it off but of course if you're using a colour in the gel itself you don't want to waste it. So. Oops, got a piece of paper stuck on there, that's not going to do any good. Okay, I think that's as good as that one's going to get. So I'm going to leave that to dry and then I can show you the full effect of the paste. But those are items that are very useful to have if you are going to do any stenciling. If you're going to do a four size stenciling, then you could probably find a window squidgy to use. That will give you the full A4 width and you won't have lines in the middle of your design, which is really not very attractive. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye bye.